Hello and welcome. In our previous video, we listened to political scientist Dr. John Mearsheimer talk about realism in international politics. In this video, we'll take a look again at Dr. Mearsheimer, this time for a simple explanation about the architecture of great power politics and state behavior. As in the last video, we'll summarize everything at the end. Population and wealth are the two foundations of military power. I want to give you my theory of international politics, my theory of great power politics. I want to tell you how I think the world works at its most basic level. I start with five assumptions about the world, and then I take those five assumptions up, and I come up with a series of behaviors involving the great powers. My first assumption about the world is that states are the principal actors, countries, and there's no higher authority that sits above states. As many of you know, in international relations, we refer to this as anarchy. Anarchic does not mean murder and mayhem. Anarchic is an organizing principle. There's no higher authority. Point one. Point two, or assumption two, is that all states have some offensive military capability. So the second assumption has to do with capabilities. The third assumption has to do with intentions. No state can ever be certain as to what the intentions of other states are. Because they're in people's heads and you can't see into people's heads. So we could never figure out exactly what Soviet intentions were, whether Stalin was running Soviet policy, Khrushchev was running policy, or Brezhnev. The fourth assumption is that the principal goal of states is survival. And the reason is simple. If you don't survive, you can't pursue any of your other goals. And then the fifth assumption is that states are rational actors. They're basically strategic calculators. They're good at coming up with strategies for maximizing their prospects of survival. If you like what you're seeing, please consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel. A few clicks can make all the difference to us and help the channel grow. Thank you. States fear each other. Why do they fear each other? They fear each other because there may be a powerful state that has malign intentions. The second form of behavior you get is self-help. You do not depend on anybody else. This is not to say you can't form alliances, but it is to say it's a self-help world. The third form of behavior is that you figure out very quickly that the best way to survive in the international system is to be the most powerful state in the system. When I talk about maximizing power, the ideal situation is to be a regional hegemon, to dominate your region of the world, number one, and number two, to make sure that no other state dominates its region of the world. So just take the United States. The United States, when it got started in 1783, was comprised of 13 colonies strung out along the Atlantic seaboard. What we did was we marched across the continent and we carved out this huge and powerful state and then with the Monroe Doctrine, we pushed the European great powers out of the Western Hemisphere. We went to great lengths to create regional hegemony in the Western Hemisphere. At the same time, we do not tolerate peer competitors. We played a key role in putting Imperial Germany, Imperial Japan, Nazi Germany, and the Soviet Union all on the scrap heap of history. And you can see the United States putting its crosshairs on China today. According to our playbook, 
there's only one country that's allowed to be a regional hegemon, and that's the United States of America. So there are five assumptions about great power politics. One, states are the players, and there is no higher authority over them. Two, capability. All states have offensive capabilities, some more than others. Three, intention. No state can be certain of other states' intentions. Four, survival. The main goal of states. Everything hinges on that, obviously. Five, states are rational actors. They will always create strategies to ensure their survival. Next, states always display certain behaviors. Fear. States fear each other. Uncertainty about other states' intentions breeds that very sentiment. Self-help. States should be independent in matters of defense. Alliances are positive, but states must be able to protect themselves. Survival. The best way to survive is to become the most powerful state in the system. The ideal situation is to be the regional hegemonic power and prevent others from becoming the hegemon in their own region. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.